Hello everybody and welcome now again to this uh, edition of the uh, Rebel White Ball. And as usual, before we move on to uh, sporting matters, I look at a few comments that have uh, caught our attention since we last spoke with you. Earlier on today, Michal Martin was on about the uh, positivity emerging from the vaccine rollout program. He now reckons that there's um, 2 million people that are fully vaccinated in the country, probably slightly under 50% of the population. He also said that uh, I think this 70% of the population have it, received at least one vaccine or one jab. Uh, now, I think that's slightly behind what he had predicted earlier on when he uh, mentioned that by the start of July, 82% of the population would have uh, reached that target. Um, the other, I suppose, each cohort that has been causing a lot of uh, grief uh, is the age group between uh, 16 and 69 who who've yet to receive probably, I, I presume they've all received their first, but secondly, they are second. And um, he promised that that would be delivered uh, in the next 10 days, which would be, if you like, in time for the, the, the reopening. I know you're not, is it fully protected or whatever, for a number of uh, days after that. Then you have these uh, digital COVID certificates. Um, these are kind of worked out by uh, the European Union. And um, I suppose this is a lot to do with travel, but, but, but also they're saying that this could play a role in the, the reopening of the hospitality. Now, I don't know enough about that. Is it practical? Uh, I presume there will be ongoing discussions with the various representative bodies of um, the hospitality industry in this country. And then I noticed that Leo, who likes going a solo, I don't know that he ever uh, played too much Gaelic football or anything like that. But he has now mentioned the fact that uh, these antigen tests, which have proved rather controversial and if it definitely not supporting them, uh, he said that he could see that there would be a role for them in the reopening. So watch this space as regards that. Uh, then if it's an area, well, I suppose, look, they are painting the uh, gloomy picture saying that, you know, the way that the growth of the uh, variant, the Delta variant is, um, the rate of growth there is that we could have, you know, up to a thousand cases by when the start of August, end of July. But, uh, you know, a strong argument can be made now, like maybe that those numbers, I'm not saying they don't really matter, but, you know, hospitalizations are the real uh, key indicator now. And, you know, my God, if they don't fall down or fall back um, with, with the vaccine, we, we were in serious trouble. The other, for those of you who are into elections, I know some of you, but this is part of your psyche in Ireland to be interested in elections. Well, there's a by-election happening today, as you know, and it's the uh, Dublin South by-election to describe it as a kind of an affluent area. Uh, they, call it, they, they, they always uh, include the term leafy suburb of South, South Dublin. Well, there's probably a couple non-leafy parts stuck into it as well. Um, this is an election, you know, that Fine Gael would be seriously disappointed if they uh, win this or Murphy had that seat. And this fellow James Gagan is their candidate in this occasion. And it's probably, a, it was meant to be a bit of a battle between Fine Gael and uh, Sinn Féin. Lynn Boylan is their candidate, but uh, Ivana Betchik, who is probably well known outside of politics, uh, she's representing Labour here, and you know, that could be significant for them. But I noticed, was it yesterday, the four out canvassing Leo uh, suggested that the Fine Gael voters that, you know, obviously to get number one to the Fine Gael candidate, but that they should follow on their preference to the uh, other party uh, candidate, the governing party candidates, that is the Green and the Fianna Fáil um, candidate. However, I would think that both those two parties did not reciprocate as Leo was hoping. They more or less advised voters vote number one for them and then whatever, you, whatever you're having yourself at after that. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to know how that one pans out, which you know probably results of that, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe later on this evening or tomorrow sometime. Anyway, uh, moving on to sport, and I suppose before we talk about anything that might happen this weekend, my God, what a weekend, last weekend, was the, the happenings were to a great part surreal. You had uh, Dublin Stroke against Wexford in the Leinster Championship. Uh, was it one of the smallest winning matches of the weekend and certainly not in their territory. Then you have the whole Stephen Cluxton scenario being debated on national television that, you know, some people are saying that he's a bit unfair on Dublin management and to the goalie that's in there at the moment. 
Um, he's not retired, he's taking time out. Last night he played another football match for his club panels, he played a centre back in that. Then you had Joe Kenny and Patrick Hogan missing freezes if they were going out of fashion. And the fact that Dublin beat, you know, Galway itself in the Leinster Championship was, was a major was a major story. But anyway, this weekend I think is a huge one for Cork G. Uh, the footballers, they on Saturday take on Limerick at three o'clock on the Gaelic grounds. There's three and a half thousand people are logged into this one now. I'm I'm almost tempted to ask, will that many people be uh, present? Will there be that much of a demand for tickets? We'll, we'll wait and see. Um, there was a time maybe when Cork versus Limerick, yeah, Cork would be favourites for that. That day is gone. The day is gone for Cork being favourites in a lot of matches. Um, you know, Cork were Division 2 team, Limerick are, you know, Division 2, Division 3 job. And I think they'll give Cork plenty of it. Um, you know, I'd be just really happy that Cork would get away there um, and get get out of the place with a victory on Saturday evening. Limerick have, you know, a number of good players. Billy Lee's their manager, things have improved considerably since he took over. And uh, players like Ian Corbett and uh, Danny Neville, you know, they've been outstanding service to, servants to that county. Then you have the Burke brothers, Robbie and Hugh. Um, so, and, and they're speedy forwards, maybe not massively physical or anything like that. I remember they were a bit unlucky last year in the Munster Championship. Cork, on the other hand, look, no, there's no point bemoaning the fact that the absence of Kieran Sheehan, now retired, and Cahal O'Mahony robbed them of two serious forwards. So other people will have to step up to the plate. I'd be hoping that Luke Conley would be, you know, um, shooting the lights out, if you like, and uh, Brian Hurley, um, you know, I know it's, it's a lot is expected of both of them, but, you know, they'll have to deliver. And also, you know, that Cork would adopt a real positive approach to this game and, and go for Limerick from the very go. E. Maguire should be dominating midfield. Rory Dean is in there as well. So, yeah, look, expect Cork to win it, but expect that, uh, you know, it will be close encounter. And... Um, if they win, whoever does win, would be playing Kerry, I would imagine, with all the greatest of respects to Tipperary, who are the most of the championship. They play Kerry um, also on Saturday, 7 o'clock on Torles, and um, there can only be one result here, or else we have to throw our hat at it completely. Again, we'll be watching the influence of Paddy Clifford. You know, he's made a big addition to that Kerry team since he came in there. Um, the other game, you know, I mentioned about being weekend for Cork. Well, for Hurling, it's also a massive weekend because there's a real opportunity, you know, for Cork to end a massive bad uh, period without winning a major trophy. Yes, they did win an All Ireland Under 17 event, I think, back in 2017. It was a once off competition when the minor was changed from 18 down to 17. But other than that, you know, you've Way back to 2005 for a, a is it a scene of victory? 2000 for a minor victory, even 98, I think, for under 21. So, this Cork under 20 team, which defeated Tipperary, uh, was it two days before Christmas? And unlike other years, which I always thought was ridiculous, there was only one team going forward um, because you could win a monster championship, as happened Cork. The year before, Tipperary went forward as well and hammered them in the All Ireland final. And, like, you know, Cork, this, a lot of these Cork players have a lot of experience of playing the big stage, but not a lot of experience of winning. They lost the minor final in 2017, I think it was to Galway, and then they lost the last under 21 before the age was changed in 2018, and then in 2019 got a white hawk in that day against Tipperary. Um, so yeah, they, you know, I think it's a really important game, but there's no underestimating Dublin. Uh, that's all over. After what we saw last weekend, they have a number of series players. Lee Gannon, watch out for him. And by the way, when I mentioned earlier about Cork winning that All Ireland in 2017, that that special under 17, it was Dublin they played in that, and you know, there's quite a number of those players playing for Dublin as well. Dara Connery and fellas like the Roach brothers, uh, Owen and Brian, you know, they have a lot of experience, Tommy O'Connell, and then, you know, up front, you have Alan Connolly, Sean Barrett, and um, Sean Toomey. Uh, of course, you're over. Conor O'Callaghan from Drum Tariff is the team captain. Wouldn't it be nice if, you know, a man from that neck of the woods was the captain Cork. So it goes on in Nolan Park. That game is at 7.15 now. I'm not too sure what the story at the moment is regards. I think there's only supposed to be 500 going to it, but I think that number can change. 
and there would be a lot of interest, no doubt in the world about that. About that. So the best wishes to both court teams. It's whatever about last weekend. Um, you know, there's no doubt about it that that, that um, these are two big games. As regards the qualifier, if you're wondering how that going, how that's going to pan out. You now that Cork are, are in it, the hurling qualifiers, the draws I think are going to be made Monday, uh, Monday uh, morning probably. They're waiting for a, a, preliminary, a preliminary round match between Leash and Antrim. Um, I presume Antrim will that, uh, win that game. That'll go on at two o'clock on Saturday. So I think this is what's going to happen. There's going to be two qualifier matches played uh, next weekend. So there's a possibility that Cork can get a boy, and but if they don't get a boy, they'll be playing. They could play the winners of that Leash Antrim game. The boy would be probably the preferred one. Leash Antrim would be second, which I think would be Antrim. But they could also draw one of the other two, uh, Connacht or uh, Leinster counties, Galway. I know, uh, Galway or Wexford. So either way, like the qualifiers are going to be a big story you now for Cork. But they always. Once they always they do well enough, and I think last week's performance against them, you know, you got to look at positively the positive side of that, and we'll continue in that vein. Other games then uh, in the Ulster Football Championship, there's two quarterfinals uh, to see who will do, uh, who will join Monaghan and Armagh in the semi-finals. You have Tyrone playing Cavan on Saturday, and this is post. Um, so after skipping my head there, I, 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 come, I come, back, uh, come back to that in a second. And uh, Mickey Hart, post Mickey Hart. So Tyrone will be playing Cavan, even though Cavan of the Ulster Champions, a bit like Tipperary down here, like that was, you know, it's a once off, marvellous, yes, but it was a once off. And if Tyrone can't beat Cavan, uh, you know, I think they would they, they would see that as a seriously damning indictment on them because Cavan haven't been going that well since that Ulster Championship victory. And then that game on is on a Saturday, and then on Sunday we have Donegal playing Derry. And, you know, Donegal will be interested to see now how Michael Murphy gets on in that game. And Derry, for their part, they were down, I think, in Division 4, which I believe, which is absolutely ridiculous for a county of their stature, if you like. But they've worked their way up and they've been improving. They won the, least, the recent Division uh, 3 uh, final against Offaly. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be. Uh, you know, an interesting match, but I still expect Galway to win that one. And over in Connacht, we'll probably have another one of these mismatches. This time it's going to be Mayo versus Leitrim. And look, you can't look anywhere there. Mayo should get, you know, qualify uh, to meet uh, to meet uh, Galway in the Connacht final. There are two, I think, two All Ireland semi finals in the minor, the 2020 minor. Uh, Me play Derry in one, and Kerry play Russ Common in, uh, in the other. Uh, ladies football and Cork begin their journey to Torscro Park this weekend. Now the way the ladies football operates is that they have divided up into four groups and the two top teams in each group will qualify for the quarterfinals. Cork, Barry, an absolute disaster. And as far as I know, they're in group B with uh, Mead and Tipperary. And they play Mead this weekend, this Saturday at 2 o'clock, I think it is in Bor. Now Mead operate in Division 2. They did get to the Division 2 league final and surprisingly, uh, they gave Kerry a good hawk in that day. So maybe they're a bit better than what I'm giving them credit for, but I still think they can't pick it over that one. And, uh, you know, we'll drive on from there. We'll be keeping an eye on that. And um, we'll be on the soccer, and I suppose, look, what else is it about now? Only the European Cup final, the Euros, uh, come to a conclusion on Sunday at uh, 8 o'clock. And, you know, a lot of people will be disappointed about that. Um, not so much about the results, but it formed part of their entertainment for the last month or so. And some great games, some great encounters. Uh, but anyway, England have got there, I think, to their is it second ever major final. They won the last one in 1996, if you remember that. But if you do, you're probably bigger trouble than what you think you are. Anyway, um, and Italy are there. I think it's their ninth major final. So it could be a case of his football coming to Rome or his football coming home. And we've all this uh, carry on that we go on now until Sunday evening at 8 o'clock. And of course, it's a little civil war here in Ireland as to whether Irish people should support England. Yeah, some do and some don't. Um, last night's game against the Danes, which England won 2 1 without scoring from play, it must be said, their first goal was, a, was, was an OG. And then there was a very 
debatable penalty, according to many of the experts that Raheem Sterling dived. Some smart like has posted already that he's been after being selected in the British diving team for the uh, upcoming Olympics. But uh, there was VAR, and I mean, like, God almighty, you would imagine that they'd have got that right. Um, there was a second ball on the pitch as well when that was going on, and I know that the Danes are really disappointed about it, but, 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 but uh, I think we have to say that England were the better team, the better team of the night. If you want to be behind the England, you could be saying, look, all their matches have been played in Wembley. I think Bar won. Um, sure. And with that happening here in Ireland with the Dubs, so maybe if you should be uh, too critical of them, then you have the uh, two Irish guys in inverted commas that are playing for them. Um, but far be for me to be uh, offering advice to a senior politician in this country, but uh, whoever was in charge of Hugh Coveney's social media, his Twitter account last night, I think should have uh, a think about what they're doing. Uh, okay, he's entitled to what he's like, and so are they. But um, did he really have to put up a tweet um, wishing? He said, best good luck to England, best team in the tournament, and they are our neighbours. Um, sure, look, maybe you could debate some of it. The Danes probably aren't that... They are our European allies, maybe more than these Brexiteers across the water. Uh, but it was I, I just thought that there was... Was there any great need for that tweet? And maybe he's massively into sport. Does he, does he uh, tweet every time that, that uh, tracked and play? Uh, I just, I, I'm not too sure that, that he wished the cock holders the best of luck last week, but probably he will this week in the footballers and the under 20 years. I was a bit, I was a bit surprised, uh, to say the very least, about that. Um, domestic soccer, uh, Division 1 of the League of Ireland, and both our Cork teams beaten again last weekend. I think it was Cork City who were beaten by 3 to United, the newcomers 3 2, and um, Cove were beaten by, Co uh, by Bray. Uh, two one that well they're in action Friday night at a quarter to eight again. Uh, Bray coming to Cork City, uh, City who are on twelve points, second last ninth out of ten, and then you have Cove Ramblers travelling to Galway. Galway are in second place. Uh, Cove Ramblers. Uh, so these are going to be two big matches again. And look, the season is moving on. They need to start uh, getting points on that board. Uh, moving to rugby, and you could argue what's going on with the Lions. They played the Sharks last night, this, you know, they're out in South Africa now, but there's so many positive COVID cases emerging from all quarters there. You wonder, whatever about football coming home, could the Lions be coming home quicker than uh, they planned their, um, their warm-up match, if you like, against the uh, Bulls has been postponed. That was due to go ahead this week in several cases in that club in South Africa. And then you had the Springboks game itself. I think their game in uh, Georgia has also been called off. And the big tests start next weekend. So we'll be watching during the week uh, how that all pans out. Um, the Irish rugby team, and whatever about international rugby, their ideal at coming up with the organisations are coming up with names. It's called the Summer Series. Uh, last weekend, Ireland beat uh, the USA. And uh, or Georgia, I should say, this weekend, they, this Saturday night, at um, seven fifteen in the Aviva, they take on um, they come the USA, and from a Munster and maybe West Cork point of view, well, first of all, Munster quick Casey will get his first cap against the USA. Um, Gavin Combs got his first cap last week coming off the bench. Uh, he's been selected to start. An interesting Finian Witcherly uh, from Kilkil direction. Uh, is on the bench and he too, I would imagine, will get his first cap so to West Cork and get uh, their Irish caps uh, well done to them within a week of each other. Um, other events are taking place, a, um, a number of kind of international event, events, if you like. You have the under 23 rowing championship, and then obviously there's going to be a number of Cork rows taking, play, taking part there. And you have the European Athletics under 20 championship, and Ireland have selected about I don't know, the 27 or 28 athletes to travel. Uh, five of them are from the West Cork region, probably a couple more from other parts of Cork. For Bannon Athletic Club, it's going to be a special occasion. Um, they have four athletes selected. Dermot O'Connor, who will be uh, taking part in the decathlon. He's from the Kilady area, if you're into this local area around here. 
You have Fionn Harrington, Ben Donin, uh, running in the 3,000 metres, and the two ladies from Bandon Athletic Club, um, Lauren McCourt, who's from Indy Shannon, she'll be running in the 200 metres and the 400 metres relay. And then you have um, Michael Tuhull, total, an outstanding new athlete from Kilbritton taking part in the Hammer. And further west, uh, not to be out on the Dawnies Athletic Club, and I think she plays with the Dawnies ladies football team as well, uh, Mae O'Neill. His mother was an outstanding athlete and she's taking part, I think it's in the 800 and the 400 metre uh, relay. So well done to them over the next few days in that event. Uh, finally, and from time to time we mentioned charitable events that take place, you know, really genuine, every fundraising event is, and I suppose look, I could be calling them all out, but came across an interesting one um, that's uh, ongoing if you like, but back in 2010, and Indian Shannon Farmer uh, was diagnosed with cancer, thankfully, uh, because of the professional care he received at CUH. He's made a full recovery, the name of the man. And the question is uh, Gerald Hurley, a veteran farmer from uh, Crowhill in Indian Shannon. And seemingly down through the years, he's thought about, you know, repaying the care, both pastoral and medical, that he got uh, during his time on his recovery journey. So in order to cut a long story short, he's decided to, to, to donate one of his own bred Hereford um, bullocks, a 28-year-old uh, bullock. Um, and this bullock would be sold by auction at Bandon Mart. One o'clock in Monday, we might even call in there. And the entire funds are going to go to Cork Ark House, which is a marvellous charity and supports people, you know, in terms of counselling that have cancer and offering accommodation support as well as counselling for families of, of uh, cancer patients. And... Um, as well as, you know, the, the, the entire proceeds check will be written after the animal is uh, sold. So, so hopefully the buyers will come in and, and uh, drive each other on in that. <laughs> Maybe they could do it a few puffers, I think they call them in that industry. But as well as that, then, you know, there's a, a page open where, you know, anybody who would like to make any sort of a contribution, uh, I'll stick up the link there a little bit later on. It's Cork Ark. Uh, slash donate slash bullock and um, you know I know already there's been a great reaction to it so yeah that's well done to Gerald it's a very very generous offer isn't it you know to be making that like I don't know somebody told me this bullock could be worth about 1500 quid I don't know but you know he's donated that and so we obviously say thanks to him so until we meet again uh, dear friends thanks for listening thanks for watching and enjoy the remainder of the weekend